In this tutorial we're going to be looking at selection statements in Turing. If you haven't already or if you're not familiar with conditional expressions, I suggest you take a look at my previous tutorial on that topic. But for now I'm going to assume that you understand them. So when we talk about selection in Turing, we're talking about making a decision. And the easiest way to make a decision in Turing is with an if statement. So the way that we do that, the syntax for it, is we use the word if, and that tells us that we're making a decision. And then there's the, the item or the expression that we're going to make the decision on. And in this case, I'm saying if true. So that's, that's going to be a positive decision. Then, and then the question is, what do we do with that? So in this case, if true, then I'm going to put the statement is true. And then when you're done with that, you type in end if. That's the end of your uh, conditional statement. So that means you could put a second line in here. Put second line. So if I run this, the statement is true and second line. Both of those uh, both of those items appear. Notice that I use some indentation here to uh, visually show here's the beginning of my if statement, here's the end of my if statement, and then everything in between is going to be executed if this part is true. Now I put in true, no one would write a conditional statement this way because, or a selection statement this way, because it doesn't make a choice. This is always going to be executed. You might as well just have a program that has those two lines of code. And just to show you the, uh, the opposite effect, if I put in false here, if false then, well, a, a conditional statement is based on the idea of something being true. So if I put false here and run this, I should get, I'm not getting anything at all actually, there's nothing to run in the program. And put Just want you to see that. That was the reason why the window wasn't wasn't even opening because there was nothing for this program to do. So if I have true here, it actually outputs those statements. And if I have false here, nothing happens. Now, we're not going to generally do that. We're going to compare things to each other. Now I'm going to start off with a pretty silly comparison, which is I'm going to start off with if 1 equals 1. Well, what is that? Why would you do that? Well, if 1 equals 1, that's true. So if I run this again, everything's true. But I don't want to do that. I want to do something a little bit more interesting. How about if x equals y? And then I'm going to create a couple of variables, x and y, that are integers. And I'm going to set x equal to 1. And I'll set y equal to 1. Now I say if x equals y. Well, is 1 equal to 1? Yes, it is. I've made use of variables. It's far more likely that your program is going to be comparing things using variables. And if I run this, oh, integer, int, not integer. And so I run this and it works out just fine. Is 1 equal to 1? Yes, it is. Still not very interesting. And so let's uh, make this a little bit more interesting again. If x is greater than y. So if x is greater than y, then we'll write out the statement is true. Well, x is not greater than y, so we end up, we don't get anything there. Um, so why don't we make x greater than y? And why don't we put in something like the first number is larger. I don't need that second line in there anymore. So if x is greater than y, then how about actually, why don't I just say x is greater than y. So that's my result. So if I run this, x is greater than y. Now, what if I want to test uh, it, whether or not, or what if I want a statement as to whether or not y is greater? So I could add another conditional statement. In this case, I'm going to say x 
less than y. Well, if x is less than y, it's the smaller of the values. So then I'm going to say x is smaller than y. And I might even have a third selection statement where I say x equals y, and then we would say x is equal to y. So these are some pretty simple selection statements. And if I run this, I'm only ever going to get one of these results because each of these conditions is different. So sometimes I'm going to get x is greater than y. If I bump y up to be 3 and I run that, I'm going to get that x is smaller than y. And if I set both of them equal to 3, I'm going to get x is equal to y. So there you have an introduction to conditional statements and how to use those, sorry, an introduction to selection statements and how to use conditional expressions to have your selection statements actually make choices. So that's it for this tutorial. In future tutorials I'm going to be covering uh, more on selection statements, making more sophisticated selection statements that give you a little bit more variety in your options.